Okay, so um, we've talked about this idea of a Fourier transform for a periodic waveform. Okay, so back up for a second. What was, so periodic waveform has a Fourier series, which is given by this formula here. And there's there's two other formulas that go with that, right? In words, what does that mean again? What does that thing mean in words? It's a sum of sine, sine and cosine waves, right? In other words, and those those sine and cosine waves are harmonically related. I mean, there's a fundamental frequency omega naught, and then there is this, uh, the, the harmonic frequencies are n omega naught, and n is always an integer, right? So those that's that's our basic sort of approach for periodic waveforms. And then we said we related that to this thing called a Fourier transform. So what's the, what is this guy? X of T is a function of time. What's X of omega? What's it a function of? Function of frequency, right? And what's it, so what's it gonna look like? For a periodic waveform, what's X of omega gonna look like? So in other words, let's just say I had cosine of, I don't know, 30 T, minus 30 degrees, what would that look like? What would X of omega look like for that thing? Well, that's what X of T would look like. Yeah, X of T would be a cosine wave. What would X of omega look like? Well, so, is it what? <laughs> Go for it, you threw it out there. I was the one asking the question. You say my question was stupid. <laughs> uh, so 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 what's what's x of omega? What's it tell us? What is what's in the yeah yeah? It's it's, it's impulses at the frequencies where I've got some content in the signal. So in this case, if I got cosine thirty t minus thirty degrees, where are the impulses going to be? Thirty thirty radians per second, right? Not not the thirty degrees. And then there's another impulse, right? There's one at 30. Where's the other one? Negative 30, right? So at 30 and negative 30. And in reality, there's two graphs that go with this thing, right? I'm gonna give myself much space here. Cosine 30t minus 30 degrees. There's two graphs. This graph here is the magnitude of it. Right, because x of omega is a complex number. So what else do I have to graph? The angle. the angle, right? And so for the angle, I would have, in this case, one impulse that would be down and one impulse that would be up. Which impulse would be going down? The one at 30 radians per second. Yeah, so the one on the right, right? So there would be an impulse down at 30 radians per second, an impulse up, at negative 30 radians per second, okay? And to do this, you know, we basically said, okay, we gotta figure out the Fourier series coefficients. We figure out what frequencies they go with, and, and then we put them as a sum of impulses. Question would be, why, why do we ever do this? You've actually been doing it all along with Yahoo in 2112 when you deal with impedance analysis, right? If I told you I had th cosine 30 T minus 30, and you told me, give Tell me what the phasor is. What's the phasor that goes with cosine 30 T minus 30 degrees? One angle negative 30, all right? That's really very similar to the Fourier series co or the Fourier transform at 30 radians per second, all right? You've been using that all along actually. So, so Yahoo doesn't, they don't call it that in 2112, but really what you're using is, is part of the Fourier transform. All right, and that's where impedance analysis really comes from is the Fourier transform. All right, so we're gonna try to relate it to that a little bit because where would I use this? Where I use this is when I'm looking at something like filtering. All right, so you guys have dealt with the concept of filtering in 2112. All right, it's interesting. I saw yeses and nos with that. <laughs> Said the word filter. So you guys found transfer functions. Is that what you? Yeah. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna deal with that concept, but I what I'm gonna talk about is a Fourier transform more generally, and I'm not gonna we're not gonna deal with this, but I wanted to introduce the concept. You guys know what a Laplace transform is, 
All right. Laplace transform relates to a Fourier transform. Now, whether you fully remember what a Laplace transform is or not, I, I don't know. But you should know that a, a Laplace transform, if I have a function x of t, it has a Laplace transform x of s. All right. You should have seen that in, in differential equations. Similarly, a, any function x of t has a Fourier transform x of omega. All right. Now, basically, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna deal with is there's there's really there's Fourier series. This exists for periodic signals only. Periodic only. There's Fourier transforms, which exist for any waveform with finite energy. So if I'm thinking about how many signals I capture as I go from Fourier series to Fourier transform, there's a heck of a lot more. In other words, e to the negative 3t, u of t, that has a Fourier transform. All right. I'm not gonna, we're not going to derive that, but I could. All right. And then there's infinite energy signals. Those have a Laplace transform. All right. We're not going to deal with all that stuff. All right. Later on, signals and systems will deal with that. I do want to introduce this idea. So if, I, if I look at that, this is the Fourier transform equation. So for any X of T, so if I had this guy here as my X of T, I could plug that in here and I could compute X of omega. All right. We're not going to. All right, we're going to deal primarily just with the Fourier transform of these periodic signals. And for a periodic signal, it's always going to be these impulses. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted to do it is because I want to relate this to a situation where, as you should have seen when you guys had Laplace transforms, and I, if, you, if you had X of T and you said X of T had a Laplace transform X of S, all right? What did you say for the derivative? Now you may not, I guarantee you remember the, the answer to this because you used it in differential equations. You may not realize that you know it. Constant times the some, some, okay. Well, so it's something you've been using all along. Let, let's let's try to let's try to just see if we can kind of understand here real quick. So if I had, um, so x of t relates to its Fourier transform like this. All right. Let's say I had dx by dt like that. Okay. <clears throat> so what would I do to both sides of this equation here? If I had dx by dt, if I took, so I could take the derivative of both sides of this equation. So if I take the derivative of both sides, I get this d by dt of one over two pi integral okay. What happens to that? What, I, what do I do with that derivative there, that d by dt? So just to be clear what's going on here, x of t is the signal, x of omega is its Fourier transform. So I should probably, so the way we, way we sometimes express that, x of t, I'll write this letter f that connects them, right? x of t and x of omega. All right, x of omega is its Fourier transform, x of t is the time waveform, all right? What do I do with the d by dt on that side of the expression right there? What's the integral with respect to there? What variable am I integrating over? Omega. All right. So can I bring the derivative into that thing? Sure, I can. Right? Because it, I couldn't do that if this was a d. So, so if I have the derivative with respect to omega, I can pull that into this expression. So if I do that, this guy becomes one over two pi, negative infinity to positive infinity, x of omega 
times d by dt of e to the j omega t d omega like that. All right. What's that? What's that derivative? What's that become? What's the derivative e to the j omega t? j omega times e to the j omega t, right? So this guy becomes, at the end of the day, 1 over 2 pi j omega x of omega times e to the j omega t. Now, without getting all lost in the math, what I've what I've expressed here is I have let's put the two expressions next to each other. I have x of t is this one over two pi e to the j omega t dt d omega, and I have dx by dt is 1 over 2 pi times j omega x of omega e to the j omega t d omega. Hey, look at that going. What's that, what's he doing? All right. Basically, what, the, what, is, what, what did I just do? This guy here was the Fourier transform. So x of omega the thing that multiplies the e to the j omega t is the Fourier transform. So the x of omega is the Fourier transform of x of t. What is the Fourier transform of dx by dt? So the thing that multiplies the e to the j omega t is the Fourier transform. So what's the Fourier transform then? of dx by dt. What's the Fourier transform of dx by dt? So what's the thing that multiplies the e to the j omega t in this case? What's that? So what's multiplying e to the j omega t? This is not a trick question, right? What's multiplying e to the j omega t? J omega times x of omega, right? So it looks, it's, it seems harder than it, than it looks like. J omega times x of omega is the ft of dx by dt. So what this is saying is, is if x of t, this is pretty similar. You've actually been doing this all along, right? You, so you've been doing this in, in um, so x of t and x of omega, and dx by dt is to say, if I know the Fourier transform of x, then the Fourier transform of its derivative is j omega times whatever its Fourier transform is, all right? Now, you've been doing this all along in circuits, right? In circuits, where did, where did I use this? I need more. Hmm? Any inductor yeah, you sure have been using this there. Yeah. So, and, and in differential equations, you had a similar result, right? In differential equations, you said if I had x of t, it had a Laplace transform of x of s. And you said, all right, if I took the derivative of that, you said it was s times x of s, like that. So that if you had a differential equation that was like, I don't know, dy by dt plus 3y equals 6. If I said to you, use Laplace transforms to solve that, let me just let me say it's, let me say it's equal to x. Okay. And let's make it clear that x of t and y of t. So in differential equations, if you had that as your differential equation, and I said, use Laplace transforms to solve that. You take the Laplace transform of both sides of that thing. What's the Laplace transform of x of t? Well, you say it's x of s, right? What's the Laplace transform of everything on this side of the equation? The left side of the equation. 
I know you guys know how to do it. S, S yeah, you say S times Y of S plus three Y of S. And the reason you did that is because the derivative of a function has the has a Laplace transform that's S times its Laplace transform. So it becomes this whole thing. So you way you solve that is you said, well, Y of S is equal to x of s over s plus 3. And you guys knew how to do inverse Laplace transforms and all that stuff. That's sort of the same thing that I have here, right? I've got the same exact result. Basically, what I've said is I have, if I have a function x of t, and I know it's Laplace transform, <clears throat> and then I take the derivative of that thing, I know that it's Fourier transform is going to be j omega times x of omega. What's the difference? The only difference is everywhere I had a, an s, I have a j omega. Okay, that's the difference. So how would I use that if I had, let's say this, let's say I had dy by dt plus, I don't know, um, Let me write this way, tau dy by dt plus y of t equals x of t, okay? So let's say I've got that relationship, okay? And I know that x of t has a Fourier transform, x of omega, y of t has a Fourier transform, y of omega, like that, okay? How could I use that here to try to solve this differential equation. Just think of it like Laplace transforms. Let's take the Fourier transform of both sides. Okay. What's the Fourier transform of the right side? X of omega. Okay. X of omega. What's the Fourier transform of the left side? Tau, J. Tau times J omega times what? Y times Y of omega, right? Plus Y of omega. Like that. So now what I do is I solve for this thing. I say y of omega times j omega tau plus one equals x of omega. Now this is kind of looking a lot like what you see in circuits, right? <clears throat> Where I've got j omega's time stuff, right? So in this case, what I, what I do is I say that the Fourier transform of the output, that's what this is. If I think, remember y of t, this is always my output x of t is my input, y of omega, the Fourier transform of the output is equal to x of omega divided by j omega tau, j omega tau plus one. And what we do is we take whatever's multiplying that x of omega and we turn that into h of omega, right? That's what I call the transfer function for a particular system. So if I have a, if I have a differential equation that represents the input output relationship, I can define for that thing what I call the transfer function. And, and it's the Fourier transform that leads to that. Now, the Fourier transform basically leads to the impedance stuff that you're used to, right? And the way where that really kind of comes from, right? If I just took, let's say, let's say I took this circuit. Um, let's say I had uh, a current source. into a capacitor, right? I equals what? In terms of, in terms of the differential equations of this thing, right? There's the voltage across the capacitor. And let's say there's a current going this way, okay? And let's say that this current is periodic. So it could be, you know, cosine omega t, right? I say I is equal to what? In differential equation world, how do I relate I to the capacitor voltage? C, dV, C, dT, right? 
what I can do is bring that over into the into the Fourier transform world, and I could say I of omega is equal to what? What do I do with the derivative there? What so what's what happens to the d by dt? What's that become if I go to the Fourier transform side? J omega times C times the Fourier transform of that voltage. And what do I get? I get that VC of omega is equal to one over J omega C times I of omega. This thing here is a transfer function, H of omega. Right, it 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 transfers or relates the input to the output. So so the input being I of omega, the output being V C of omega. Right. So when I look at that, I call that H of omega. What do you normally call that? You call that impedance, right? Because it has units of one over ohm, or has units of ohms, I guess, if I were to do it. So we call it impedance. All right. But it is a it is a transfer function. I could think of it. So we say it's a function. It's a complex number, right? It's a complex number of a real, that's a function of a real variable, right? Omega is a real number, right? So, so if I think of it, you guys are used to think of it in the, in the context of Yahoo gives you a problem and Omega is a number, right? Omega is a hundred radians per second or 10 radians per second or whatever. What I'm saying is, is a Omega in this case, Omega is a variable. So no matter, so basically I can plot this thing as a function of omega. So I can see what it's going to look like depending on whatever frequency my input has. All right. So you, you guys have been doing this for a while. So with, with Yahoo, what were, what did you call these things? I of omega and BC of, I'm calling them Fourier transforms. What's he called? One over J omega C gets multiplied by the current phaser to get the voltage phaser, right? So <clears throat> phaser analysis, we, he didn't derive it this way. But phaser analysis is basically a special case of impedance analysis. Or sorry, phaser analysis or impedance analysis is a special case of the Fourier transform, right? So the Fourier transform more generally is what you're actually, what you've been doing there. You've been taking the Fourier transform of an input like cosine of omega T and calculating the Fourier transform of its output. All right. So you've been using this result, whether you realize that or not, because quite honestly, you don't need to have all the details understood to be able to figure out what impedance analysis is doing. Okay. All right. But we want to use that kind of in a more general way. So what happens if I had, um, I don't know, a more complicated differential equation, right? So I had something like this. I know I had D squared y by dt squared plus three dy by dt plus four y of t equals x of t. What would I do in that case? So I want to get I want to get this into the Fourier transform space, right? So x of omega is what I'd have here. Right? What do I do to the other side of the equation? Yep. So I'd have a J omega squared times Y of omega plus three J omega. Yep. Times Y of omega plus four Y of omega. And if I, if I solve all that, basically what I end up with is Y of omega equals H of omega times X of omega. It's always the case that the Fourier transform of the output is here. And the Fourier transform of the input is here. <clears throat> and the transfer function relates them. Like that. All right, so in this particular case, what would my H of omega be? Yeah, one one over j omega squared plus three j omega plus four. All right, what's going to be true about that j omega squared? It's going to turn into a negative omega squared, right? Because the 
And that's that's important to, because the J squared is always going to be minus one. Right. So so basically um, you guys have seen this type of approach before sometimes. And Yahoo may do it like this sometimes where he, he uses S. Right. And you notice without getting into all the, the details on this. The reason for that is because if you notice, boy, this looks a lot like the Laplace transform, right? Where where the Laplace transform, if I, if I knew the X of S, it's S times X of S for its derivative, right? So there, these guys are all very closely related to each other. And it turns out, not getting into the details on this, the Fourier transform is a special case of the Laplace transform. If you know the Laplace transform function, you know it's Fourier transform back and forth. All right, and what's that? They the Fourier transform is a special case of the Laplace transform. Without without getting into the specific details, if I know the Laplace transform, which is the function of s, if s is equal to j omega, if I plug in s equal to j omega, I'll get the Fourier transform. Again, I, I it's a little bit beyond where I want to go with you guys because I think the, the important thing is to get the basics out. Um, but but these guys are all related to each other in descending order. Like any waveform can have a Laplace transform. Finite energy waveforms can have a Fourier transform. And periodic waveforms have a Fourier series. Um, but a periodic waveform has a Laplace transform and has a Fourier transform. They can kind of they, they can relate to each other. We're not going to get into all that. Um, Laplace transform is the one that is the most generally useful. Um, and then the Fourier series is only kind of narrowly applicable to um, periodic waveforms. But without without me getting into the the details on that, the important thing is how how would we use this Fourier transform? Well, if I if I can define a Fourier transform of the input, and I put that input into a, a certain kind of system like a circuit, and I can figure out the transfer function of that circuit, then I can figure out the ways that that circuit or that system operates on the input. In other words, how does it filter it, right? So, so basically when we use this, we use this in the context of what we call filtering, right? Um, and so we use this H of omega, what I call the transfer function, usually in a couple of different ways. So I give you an input and what I'll give you is a system like this, right? So I have a circuit um, and that circuit you know, it could be just an RC thing or, or whatever. It could be whatever circuit I want. Could be something that I, you know, like you had in project one where I go from a circuit to some sort of a discrete time set of equations. So you do it all digitally, right? Um, but I can define for this thing a transfer function. And then I can define a Fourier transform of the input, figure out a Fourier transform of the output, and then figure out what the time domain waveform is. That's what you've been doing in impedance analysis all along. All right, except this is kind of a more general way of, of thinking about it. So, all right, so how do we apply this? Four, four basic steps, right? So I figure out the Fourier transform of the input. Okay, I determine the transfer function H of omega. All right, determine the Fourier transform of the output, which would be, so if I think of my input as X of T, so if X of T is my input, and y of t is my output. <clears throat> Fourier transform of the input is x of omega. Fourier transform of the output is y of omega, which is just simply h of omega times x of omega, like that. All right, and I can use this approach to then ultimately figure out y of t. You've been doing that all along, right? Pedance analysis is just sort of a special case of this. All right, so I want to apply that here in this example, and I don't know that I want RC to be 10 seconds necessarily. <clears throat> All right, so how would I apply this here to figure out the transfer function of this thing? How can I figure out the transfer function of this circuit? Yeah, so I can use you. Peden's analysis is going to give me the right answer, but let's let's just let's do it from a differential equation. KVL, KVL right? So I'd have V sub i, my input, V sub i of t is equal to what? Yeah, so i times r plus the voltage on the capacitor. 
right? And what's I equal to? C D voltage on the capacitor DT. So it would be R C D V O by D V O by D T as it's written here. Plus V O of T. Okay. All right. Now if I if I put this into the into the Fourier transform space, I'd say V I of omega is equal to what? J omega R C, where yeah, usually that R C is tau, right? Times V O of omega plus V O of omega. All right. And then if I if I rearrange this, I get V O of omega equals one over J omega R C plus one times V I of omega. Which, if I did voltage division with impedance, I would have gotten to that same result. All right. And if you're not sure, so so when you do when you think to remember when you're doing impedance analysis, you call this a phaser, but it's it is also the same thing as the Fourier transform. All right. So it's 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 similar because I'm keeping this focused on periodic waveforms. They're the exact same thing. If I was extending this and not using um, just periodic inputs, then it would be a little bit more complicated, right? Because my VI could be, um, I don't know, it could be something like that. It could be an exponential that decays. That has a Fourier transform. This still applies for that particular case. For you, though, I'm keeping it focused, again, on periodic inputs. So basically, this is exactly like your impedance analysis, all right? So <clears throat> my H of omega, my transfer function, is this thing. So what I typically want to do is I want to look at that H of omega versus frequency. Which means I got to look at both its magnitude and its angle. Why? Why do I have to look at magnitude and angle? Because H of omega is complex, right? But it's a function of frequency, which is a real variable. So I can plot this thing on two axes, one for the magnitude and one for the angle, all right? So we, we have that basic idea of what we can do with it. So let's say I wanna understand what is this thing, what is this circuit going to do to this input? From a design perspective, this is a really useful way of thinking of things because from as we'll see, basically what I can say is, well, what values of R and C do I wanna have, let's say, to get my output to look a particular way? Right, that's where we use this idea, which we'll we're we'll, gonna use you're gonna use that a lot in the project. Right. So let's say I wanted to figure out for this, if I want to go through these steps, right? So I did the second step first, I guess, right? Figured out my transfer function. Then I want to figure out the Fourier transform of the input. This is something you should know how to do. Here's my input in my example. So I want to figure out VI of omega, the Fourier transform of that thing. All right, how do I do that? What frequencies are present in this thing? Two, two and a hundred and zero. Now that seems a little bit weird. So that means I got a, my fundamental frequency here is two, right? So my omega naught is equal to two. And then what's this guy? What harmonic is this? It's a 50th harmonic. All right, so this is my 50th harmonic. So this would be 50 times omega naught. That seems weird, but this is this is a kind of problem you might have a lot in practice where what I have going on with this particular thing is I have sort of a low frequency signal and a high frequency signal. The high frequency signal usually represents noise of some kind. All right, some unwanted signal. So we're going to deal with that kind of in in the, the sort of context uh, later on in this, and we get into the project of how do I get rid of things that I don't want to and use this idea. But let's let's define this. Sky's gonna be, a, VI of omega is a series of impulses. So in general, this should go from negative infinity to infinity. And we said it was alpha N delta of omega minus N omega naught. So, how many impulses are present 
in this thing? Well, in theory, infinite, but in reality, not infinite, right? How many is there going to be? How many non-zero ones are there going to be? Four, six, one, five. Just throwing out throwing out numbers now. <laughs> your last your last one was correct. Five, five non-zero, right? So what are the frequencies that are going to be there? Two, and minus two. Well, one hundred and negative one hundred. So the so n equal fifty and n equal negative fifty. And what's the other one? That's zero, because there's only one zero. Right. So we say this guy becomes three delta of omega. Right. There's an impulse at, at zero. Then what do I do? What about this four cosine two pi? Or sorry, four cosine two t minus 30 degrees. What would I write for that guy? Four over two e to the negative j 30 degrees. Located where? Omega minus two. Right? So that would be at omega equal to 2. Plus there'd be a 4 over 2 e to the j 30 degrees at negative 2, which has a plus sign there. What about the other one? 10 over 2. Yep, 10 over 2 e to the, e to the j 30 degrees. And this guy would be at plus 100. Or sorry. That guy's going to be located omega equal to 100. And then there's going to be 10 over 2 e to the negative j, 30 degrees. This guy would be located at omega equal to negative 100. All right. So now that I have its Fourier transform, I got to relate that to h of omega to figure out what the magnitude of the output's gonna be. Yes. Yep. So omega naught is two. And n omega naught is is a hundred. Oh, right. Yeah. That's so it's just n is fifty in this case. All right. <clears throat> you should know how you should be getting pretty comfortable with doing this part of it. All right. This definitely is something you're gonna need to be able to do for the exam. All right. Now on Wednesday in, in my recorded lecture, I will go over right, the rest of this problem where I look at trying to, to figure out the output. But you already kind of know, basically what am I gonna do? I'm gonna figure out H of omega at what values of omega? Omega equals zero, right? And omega equal plus minus two and omega equal plus minus 50. And then I'm going to reverse trans. I'm going to use that to then reverse transform to figure out what the what the actual output is. Yeah. Plus or minus one hundred. Yeah, the fiftieth fiftieth harmonic, and the end value is fifty. Yeah. Like that. All right. So I'm going to stop there for today, and I'm going to get back to the test.